Today we're going to talk PS4 finally getting EA access. After their stance earlier, why now? Why the change of heart? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. You know what I'm saying? Now, before we go too deep into this one, I need y'all to do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please. That way you know when these doses are coming because we all need them in these gaming streets, straight up. I appreciate all of y'all because I'm not too proud to ask. Now, let's talk about it. PlayStation 4 getting EA access. Why now? You know what I'm saying? So, let's just go over the history real quick. When the service originally came out, if my memory serves me right, y'all know I'm an old man here, you know what I'm saying, for all the time. I think it was around 2014, 2015 when the service was announced. It was just available for the Xbox console, the Xbox service, and that was because at the time EA Access was turned down by Sony because Sony said in so many words that it was not a value to their customers. Even at $5 a month or $30 a year, which the Access grants you the library, EA Access library of, of EA games um, available for console. They said it was not a, a deal. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a good deal, excuse me, for their consumers. And you had the PlayStation faithful echo that sentiment. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, oh, who cares about EA Access? Y'all ain't got no exclusives over there on Xbox. That's why y'all need it. Blah, 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 blah. And to be honest with you, the PlayStation faithful got used to not having it. So as we fast forward to 2019, we're kind of scratching our heads like, why now? You know what I'm saying? Well, why would they strike the deal now? Why the big change of heart? Well, your boy MM2K got a theory on it, okay? Now, now, now check me out. Again, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on. I don't have 110% proof, but I will tell you this. All the stuff that I told you in regards to Sony's reaction to the flat 2019 market-wise, the flat 2019 that they've had and that they're having in comparison to 2018 is the reason for all this now now hear me out let's 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 chop this up piece by piece first piece timing okay now for those of you that are thinking that sean layton all of a sudden just had a bright idea called up ea three days ago and said hey we're gonna get ea access come on let's let's roll this out in a couple of days you're fooling yourselves a deal like this did not happen overnight okay this is something that had to be getting into implementation starting in 2018. And I can almost guarantee you that in 2018, knowing that again, 2019 was gonna be flat market-wise and that Sony was gonna to have to show some initiatives as far as increasing their revenue to try to keep up the best way they can to the fantastic 2018 that they had, that they had to show initiative to the market and grabbing up EA access at the last minute, quote unquote, visually would do that. Would it help give like a surprise boost to the market? Even though again, this is not the type of deal that you roll out at the last minute. This was in the works back in 2018. Next piece, you have the fan base again that echoed the sentiments that we don't need EA access. We got greatness in the library, right? Now, for Sony to take this huge step and trample over those words that they're faithful, they're hardcore fanboys, whatever you want to call them, were echoing, it takes a lot because Sony cares so much about mindshare. And there's only one thing that will have them trample over their mindshare which is the market, okay? They've shown it time and time again. They've reacted to the market only for crossplay with Fortnite, right? And they're reacting to the market again now because again, 2019 is flat market-wise in comparison to 2018. There really is no big lineup in the EA Access vault that's a lot more attractive than it was at the beginning of the service you know what i'm saying i mean anthem ain't a big deal right at the moment of this recording unless um sony knows something that we don't i don't think this is a big deal for um a lot of the sony faithful even though i do believe a lot of people will sign up for the service on playstation because i think it is a good deal just not a big deal but a good deal so again because sony's words were so strong originally when they rejected this this uh um service and for them to do it all of a sudden now when there really isn't anything in the service that would make you go hmm now this is a great service in comparison to when even it rolled out it's not that big of a difference as far as the value but with it being with that being said you know what i'm saying because they need to do this for the market they're doing it and they're doing it 
at the expense of mind share to a lot of the people that echoed those same sentiments when Sony originally rejected it. And the last and final piece, which is the most important piece, I think, again, because of the flatter 2019 in comparison to 2018 that Sony had, EA financials that were released, which I'm pretty sure were shared with Sony as far as how this service is beneficial financially to all those that are involved was a big play in this whole deal. Look, those financials were just released to us, the general public, not too long ago from this recording, right? And EA reported losses in so many areas in, in, this, in that fiscal period, except for where? Digital services and services like EA Access. You know what I'm saying? They were up when a lot of other services or products from EA were down. You know what I'm saying? Even FIFA was down. But stuff like EA Access was up year over year. So, again, with the flatter 2019 that Sony is experiencing market-wise, there is no way that they could continue to leave that money sitting on a, t on a bag and on the table from EA and not take advantage of it while Microsoft is taking advantage of it and they're seeing some of the benefits of EA Access. They cannot, again, for market reasons, leave that money on the table. So Sony did the only reasonable thing they thought that they could do, and that is prepare this deal, roll it out in 2019, again, to combat the flat 2019 versus 2018. And I know I sound like a broken record, but it's important for everybody to get their business acumen up to par to understand why decisions are made, even in the gaming world. So what is the lesson from all this, all right? The lesson to be learned is that no matter who it is, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo for crying out loud, all Fortune 500 companies are beholden to who? First and foremost, the market. Therefore, never say never. And that's it from your boy MM2K, you know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always tell you, you can come with me or come at me, it don't matter to your boy. But if you did like what I had to say, you know what I'm saying? You know where you can find me. You can catch me on the corner of every boulevard, you know what I'm saying? Check the links below to follow me. Hey yo, I do a show with your peoples. Snow Bunny, Dirt Griggity, Neethals. It is called Scram Punks. It airs on Dirt Griggity's YouTube channel. Check it out, the link is below. You know what I'm saying? Wednesdays, 9 p.m. or 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And last but not least, check out my brethren. We doing it like no other. The broadband bullies, you know what I'm saying? Check out the link to the Discord. Check out the link to the merchandise. It's fly, you know what I'm saying? We got it going on. And as always, as always, you have a wonderful gaming